Hello friends, welcome to Smiley Stories. Do you know who was the first woman in the United States to earn a medical degree? That's Dr. Elizabeth Blackwell. Dr. Blackwell will always be remembered as the woman who went against the gender roles and became the first female American doctor. Today, we're going to read all about her. Before we start, please do hit that subscribe button. It really helps me keep creating new videos for you. Elizabeth Blackwell, Women in Science and Technology by Elaine A. Keeley, illustrated by Elena Bia. Early Days Elizabeth Blackwell was born in 1821 in Bristol, England. She was the third of nine children. She was smart and rather shy. Mr. and Mrs. Blackwell thought everyone should be treated equally. Their daughters and sons received the same education. The children had many books. Elizabeth loved reading them. Working against the slavery, the family believed that no one should own other people. They disliked how common slavery was in the United States. Elizabeth went to protest meetings as a teenager in New York. Mr. Blackwell had a sugar factory. In 1828, a fire destroyed the building. The business never recovered. Mr. Blackwell moved the family to New York City in 1832. He opened another sugar plant. He later sold it. The Blackwells traveled to Ohio to start over, but many companies throughout the nation were doing poorly. Mr. Blackwell died weeks later. The family was penniless. Elizabeth, then 17, started a school in their home. She, her mother, and two older sisters taught children. The school closed in 1843 when it stopped doing well. Elizabeth found other teaching jobs. When Elizabeth was 24, a dying friend encouraged her to become a doctor. She said, Women might want a female treating them, but women doctors were unheard of then. Women could not even vote. Elizabeth wanted things to change. If the present arrangements of society will not admit of women's free development, then society must be remodeled and adapted to the great wants of all humanity, she once said. Elizabeth moved south to teach music at a women's college. She studied with a willing doctor in her free time. She also taught Sunday school to slaves. This was against the law at the time. Struggles and Successes Elizabeth met a well-known doctor. He sent a letter supporting her to medical school in New York. But its professors did not want a female student. They also did not want to upset the doctor. They decided to accept Elizabeth if the entire class agreed. They were sure the young man would say no. Several classmates thought the letter was a joke from students at another school, but most understood the reason behind their teacher's plan. They thought it was silly. They voted for Elizabeth. She happily entered Geneva Medical College in 1847. Elizabeth's classmates teased and insulted her, but she did not react to them. Instead, she worked hard. The students grew to respect her. One day, a professor needed to teach the group about certain body parts. He asked Elizabeth to leave the room because he thought that she would be embarrassed. She promised to go if that was what the others wanted. Her classmates said Elizabeth should stay. She did. Elizabeth earned the highest grades in the class. In 1849, she became the first woman to receive a medical degree in the United States. Elizabeth was thrilled. She hoped to be a surgeon. Good and the bad news. There were more female medical students in the U.S. than males for the first time in 2017. But there are still fewer women teachers and leaders at medical schools. Experience helping patients is another part of becoming a doctor. 
Elizabeth heard that hospitals in Paris, France offered good training. She decided to spend a year there. But Elizabeth developed an eye disease while working at a Paris hospital. She became sightless in one eye. Her dream of being a surgeon vanished. Elizabeth moved to London, England in 1850 to work at a hospital there. One day she met Florence Nightingale. Florence was a nurse who became famous for treating soldiers during wartime. Elizabeth and Florence knew that cleanliness helps stop diseases. They taught people that hand washing keeps germs from spreading. Elizabeth returned to New York City in 1851. She opened a medical practice. People were angry. They did not think women should be doctors. No one came to see her. A women's rights champion named Horace Greeley wrote about Elizabeth in his newspaper. The article drew some patients to her office. Elizabeth's sister, Emily, earned her medical degree in 1854. The sisters and another doctor opened a hospital three years later. Its purpose was treating poor women and children. Emily was the surgeon. The hospital was immediately successful. The doctors needed more space to help everyone. Making a Difference The Civil War began in 1861. People who wanted slavery fought those who hated it. Elizabeth and Emily supported the battle against slavery. They trained women to be nurses for wounded soldiers. The war ended in 1865. Most medical schools and hospitals were still close to women. Elizabeth decided to start a school within the hospital. Doctors could practice and improve their skills while gaining experience. Many people gave money for the project. The Women's Medical College opened in 1868. Elizabeth missed England. She returned there in 1869. Emily ran the hospital and the school. Elizabeth opened a medical office in London in 1869. She gave talks about health. In 1874, she helped found the London School of Medicine for Women. She wrote a book about her life in 1895. Elizabeth died on May 31, 1910. She was 89 years old. Many women became doctors because of her courage. She showed how one person could change the world. It's not easy to be a pioneer, but oh, it is fascinating. I would not trade one moment, even the worst moment, for all the riches in the world, Elizabeth said. The End Thank you for watching. If you have enjoyed this video, please like, share and consider subscribing.